Hello everyone, welcome to Virtual Bold. This video is all about Native Federation and how can we build micro frontends using Native Federation. But before we start this video, I would request you to subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed it yet. Because after this video, I'm gonna create a series of videos on micro frontend that will include so many important topics like how can you communicate between different micro frontends and how can you manage the state between micro frontends and the host app. We're gonna also see a hands-on video on how to create micro frontend using native federation so i have already created so many videos on my channel that uh, explains about what actually micro frontend is and i've also created hands-on video on uh, like uh, creating micro frontends using module federation which is a plugin of webpack 5 that is a third party tool so there are many exciting videos on the way lined up so i don't want you to miss on any important video if you want to get full knowledge on how a micro frontend uh, fully fledged app works so subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss out on any important notification now let's start the video when i was searching for this native federation i got two important articles one article is from medium which i'm gonna discuss first and then other is from the angular architects we're gonna discuss more on this so let's see first of all if you talk about what actually native federation is so native federation is an emerging concept that involves using native javascript functionalities and ECMAScript modules to implement micro frontends without relying on build tool like webpack the idea is to use dynamic imports and esm system to federate modules so basically native federation is a concept where you can think of it as a something provided by angular itself which is backed up by angular and its architect which uses uh, browsers capabilities or uh, uh, or basically we can say javascript functionalities or ECMAScripts. scripts so basically create or bundle your remote apps or uh, to be able to enable user to work on micro frontends without relying on any third party source like module federation used to do that earlier when we were using module federation we had to rely on a third party tool that was webpack so now native federation has eliminated the need of relying on some third party tool because it is provided by angular itself and it is managed by angular architects or the angular developers only in a simple terms so there are there are few characteristics of uh, using native federation also that include simplicity uh, interoperability modernity and performance so simplicity means like uh, avoiding the complexity and overhead of configuring tools like webpack so in simple terms uh, the native federation is basically basically simpler to use its build performance is fast performance wise it is faster uh, and uh, if you compare it with the module federation it also provides modularity to your application so now moving on to the second article so this article basically describes about uh, what native federation actually is and how can we use it with the ES build in order to be able to use the proven mental model of module federation independently of webpack the native federation project was created so the line means that native federation is made up on the mental model of module federation that means it also uses the same concept of host and remote applications like module federation it offers the same options and configuration as module federation but works with all possible build tools it also uses browser native technologies such as ECMAScript modules and import maps. So this uh, native federation works on the same mental model as of uh, the module federation means it follows the same architecture pattern in which you have a host, you have uh, several remote apps and then you expose those remote apps and then consume them on their host and then build it, build it up as a complete application like independent development of the remote apps and then consuming them at a single place called host or cell application. Okay, so if you can see it uses the concept of import map. The native federation okay and this import map holds the information about the metadata so metadata is nothing it's the file or the bundle that is generated when you expose any micro front end we can also say it as a remote entry file okay so this is the metadata and this information or the path or the url of that remote entry file is stored in the import map and this is how it loads the micro front ends into the shell application Now, now if you can see on your screen this is the application which i have created using the native federation and this is a micro front end web application so if you can see on the screen this is the host application and in this particular application i have consumed two different micro front ends so here on my cursor if you can see this is the micro front end one okay which has been deployed on different server locally and this has been consumed here and then there is this other micro front end which can be loaded on the click of this button so if i click on this button see this icon or this small button which you can see here is another micro front end which has been loaded on click of this button and this same 
micro front end i have also loaded on the header on page load itself so there are different ways of loading micro front end also so these are also few of the concept that we going to see in the upcoming videos and this is a static micro front end you can see here and i am not doing anything but this micro front end the second one which i have consumed here if i click on this micro front end you see i am also able to change the theme of my application or change the color of my application dynamically so what are we doing here we are basically doing communication between the host and the remote app so this is what i was talking about we going to also see in my future videos how can we communicate between host and micro front end how can we manage these states right like here on the screen we are currently controlling the styles from micro front end and we are controlling the styles of host also and we are also dynamically loading it on the click of button so these are few of the things that we going to show that we going to see in the upcoming videos see if you can see this is the micro front end which is low hosted locally on local host 3000 okay so now we'll also try to give you an overview of how it looks in the vs code how the code actually looks so my host and remote applications are basically running on their servers so we'll discuss more on more details in next videos i'm gonna just give you some overview so what happens basically i have created two applications the first one is the host application and the other one is the micro front end one i have named it the micro front end one this is our remote application so what i have done here so whenever you create angular application we have created it normally and then we have added the configuration for native federation so whenever you do that there is a file generated called federation.config.js so this federation.config.js this is the file for host application so you will not see anything like uh, uh, remote path of remote entry because we haven't exposed anything from here we are just consuming or making it as a host but on the other place if you try to inspect the federation.config file of the micro front end you will find that we have exposed two components and we have consumed it into the host so this has somewhat similar structure to what we used to see in webpack.config.js file when we use module federation okay when we were working with that concept then we also used something similar like that okay so this is based on the same mental model as of the module federation this is what we were talking about thanks for watching the video see the video description for more details next video will be on creating a micro front end web application using the native federation so keep watching thank you